This time I'm going to explain to you another sperm functional test, namely hyperactivation. Hyperactivation has been found to be one of the most important sperm functional tests. It is one that has certainly been related not only to fertilization outcome, but also to live birth outcome. And it's one of the best predictors of uh, the chances to, to conceive. Um, so, how does this technique work? In the first instance, we, can, we need to use semen, and we preferably can use differential centrifugation to use a pellet and work with a pellet in medium, or we can use the semen directly. We use both methods, and we also use a whole range of uh, so-called capacitating media that will hyperactivate the sperm. Uh, the uh, traditional one which has been used by most people but just as a laboratory technique not to be used during IVF is of course caffeine. Uh, but there's a whole range of other media that can be used. We have recently been very successful with propane hydrochloride um, and there are also other combinations such as progesterone. Uh, and pentoxifilin and so forth. But in our lab we have standardized as a laboratory technique, please note not to be used directly from IVF, uh, caffeine. Between 5 millimole to 10 millimole caffeine and what we're going to do now, I'm going to hand the samples over to Shannon Kaiser. First of all the semen sample, she's going to inject part of that um, into the Lea chamber and then she's going to um, chase it or flush it with a capacitating medium. We can perhaps just stop here for the time being uh, before she actually shows how to do it as I just need to explain what are we doing here. Uh, it is a new technique really, the flush technique. Swim-up techniques uh, into the medium really takes a long time and sperm can capacitate or become hyperactivated in an hour or two hours or three hours. It is clinically not a friendly test that way. So here we use a modified technique called the flush technique which was developed in this laboratory where we fill half of the chamber, one and a half microliter, with semen and then we chase it with a capacitating medium. The sperm is accordingly displaced to the other side and now swim into the capacitating medium and become activated. And we've established in, in, with this method, we accelerate this process of becoming hyperactivated. And within about 30 minutes, we reach maximum hyperactivation. We will now demonstrate it to you. All right, first of all, we're going to take our semen sample and take out 1.5 microliters. Very gently, we're going to flush one chamber with 1.5 microliter. Now with a new tip, we will be using our selected capacitating media, in this case it's 5 millimolar caffeine. Take an equal volume, which is 1.5 microliter, and cautiously flush the media into the chamber, pushing the sperm to the end of the chamber. Make sure to leave your Lea slide onto the heated stage so that the sperm slowly hyperactivate and swim into the media. After having read our baseline percentage hyperactivated sperm, we wait 30 minutes to read the hyperactivation again. Make sure to read the percentage hyperactivated sperm out of 200 motile sperm. We will subsequently show you how the software works and how we determine the, the different cutoff points for swimming sperm to be classified as hyperactive. But basically uh, we use a simple Boolean argument where the 
For the linear velocity, VCL needs to be above 150 micrometers per second. The linearity less than 50%. And ALH minimum must be above 3.5. ALH max must be accordingly about, uh, must be above 7. After opening the motility module of SCA 6.2, we actually captured three different fields after 30 minutes exposed to 6 millimolar caffeine in a capacitating medium such as HDF. Let us look at one of these fields. Let's play the sperm and it can be see there are areas of really vigorous sperm motility. The pattern is looking much less progressive than which is typically encountered when sperm become hyperactivated. And if we look at the sort function, you can see that those blue blocks indicate sperm swimming through them are all hyperactivated. So in this particular field we have a very high percentage of hyperactivated sperm. Let us view the results box now and you will notice that if we go here and we just look at the motile fraction then the hyperactive sperm in this instance represent 25.6 percent. Remember the cutoff point for high quality sperm for functionally sperm that um, would actually fertilize the oocyte um, would be above 20 percent and in this instance we have 25 percent and if we again look at the field of view I can show you specific examples and how these sperm actually meet the hyperactivation criteria let us go to a typical um, uh, early form of hyperactivation like this particular sperm here And here you can see that if we look at the curvilinear velocity, uh, it exceeds 150 micrometers per second. The linearity is less than 50%, and ALH is more than 3.5. Remember, in the SCA program, we measure minimum ALH, so it needs to be above 3.5. Um, if we look at um, more advanced forms of um, hyperactivation like in this instance where we get full what we call star spin hyperactivation you can see clearly we have this typical star spin the red indicating the curvilinear velocity the blue represents the average path velocity and the green is of course representing the uh, linearity. So you can again see here a highly hyperactivated typical star spin hyperactivation and now look at the criteria 192 micrometers exceeding well the 150 micrometers VCL the linearity only about 5%, well below the 50% margin, and of course the ALH here now 7.29. Highly hyperactivated spermatozoan. So, not only can I show you all the different forms of hyperactivation here, um, but also quantitatively really showing us um, how they actually look like and that they actually meet the minimum criteria for hyperactivation. So, in summary then, if we go back to the results, we have a sample here of extremely good quality that within 30 minutes using the layer slide uh, method of the flush technique, uh, injecting sperm and then chasing that with f 5 to 6 millimolar caffeine will induce hyperactivation in a good sample within half an hour uh, and more than 20% should be hyperactivated in a good semen sample. So again, 
very simple test uh, and of great importance it can be completed within one hour whereas previous tests would take you considerably longer and so we this brings us to the end but I just need to uh, ask Shannon um, yes tell us something about good and bad hyperactivation percentage values well a sample which may have a percentage higher than 20% of hyperactivated sperm obviously called it well correspondingly has a high potential for fertilizing a loose cell. Where samples with a hyperactivated percentage below 20% obviously has a problematic fertilizing potential. Excellent. Thank you. And all of this again telling us an enormous amount of, of giving us an enormous amount of information about the functional state of sperm and the potential of sperm to fertilize the ocean.